today we're going to look at Hooke's Law in cubic solids. Now Hooke's Law describes the behavior of springs. So what we're going to do is we're going to model the solid as a collection of springs connecting a whole bunch of atoms in a cubic lattice. Now, disclaimer, I'm probably going to do this all wrong, but what's science if you don't make a few mistakes, right? Let's get started. So, what the potential that describes fairly well the behavior of the interaction between two atoms is the Leonard Jones potential, describes the Van der Waals interaction, and it looks something like this. It's a um, potential with a um, term which goes r to the one over r to the twelfth, and one term which goes r, one over r to the sixth. And um, as you can see, as the atoms get very close, they repel greatly. And then they have a sweet spot here, which is the distance they prefer to be at. And then as they get farther away, they start to repel more again. So the atom likes to sit right there on that little potential well. And so I've written up in Mathematica. You can see the equation here, what each term means. And what I've done here is I've taken the derivative. And so what that does is give me the force on the particle when it's in this potential. So as you can see, the force is high and positive on one side when it's... Um, closer to the other atom than the equilibrium distance, and the force is negative when it's farther, so it gets pulled towards that sweet spot that I mentioned earlier. And here are the two plots together. Um, so with Hooke's Law, we're modeling the atomic bonds as springs. And the way that's going to work is we have Hooke's Law, which is that the force is proportional to the um, spring constant times the displacement. And so the further you pull it, the greater the force, and it's a linear relationship. And the problem is, though, our Leonard Jones potential is not, it's not a normal potential, all right? It's this weird, wobbly shape. But for a Hooke's Law to work, you have to have something that behaves like a spring, which has a parabolic potential well, which is how you get that linear force relationship when you take the derivative. So what I've done is I've taken, I've used Mathematica, and it's wonderful math tools, to take the Taylor expansion about that equilibrium point. And you can see here, this is the second order um, Taylor expansion, so it's a parabola. And um, if you look at this little manipulate here, I've set it up so you can you know, adjust the potential well depth, you can choose the um, equilibrium distance, and you can look at the different order Taylor expansions. So that's the first order, it's a line. The second order is parabola, that's what we're going to be using. The other ones are just better and better um, approximations of the actual potential. Mathematica supposedly can do negative powers, but I'm not seeing that here, so it'd be like the actual perfect uh, model would be obviously 1 over r to 12, which is r to the negative 12. So I differentiated that, that um, second order potential, like that, and then you can see here the force response for our generalized, for our um, approximated spring bond. And so you can look at our here our force response here. Notice that like the like before, the force is positive on um, when the atoms are close together and negative when they're farther apart, so it gets pulled to that sweet spot. And I've plotted it here with the potential, so you can see how exactly it interacts with that potential. And here's the our approximate potential with the actual Leonard Jones potential. So you can see that it's not a very good approximation, but very small displacements on the order of um, 0.1 times that um, minimum distance will probably be okay. So I simplified it here to get the, and then I take a derivative again just so I can get that slope, and that'll be useful later. So here we're modeling our cubic lattice, say we have something like alpha polonium, which has the simple cubic structure, it's the only metal that has the simple cubic structure with the single um, atom motif. So we have our, our stress over here, and our strain, and there's this fourth rank tensor that connects our second rank tensors of stress and strain. But because of the wonders of mathematics and matrices, we can actually break that down into two one rank first rank tensors and a two second rank tensor, which is pretty great because it means we don't want to do some really ugly math. And so we can find that our infinitesimal strain tensor, if we're looking at a tiny, tiny piece of the solid, will look something like this. It's this. Um, the epsilon ij is equal to half of the, of the displacements of, in each direction of the um, infinitesimal piece. And so from that, we can build that out to the second rank strain tensor, which is this t 
sensor here, and it looks like this, where U is the position. So we have this, all these displacements. As you can see along the principal axes, they're just proportional to the displacements in the directions. Along the other axes, they're a little more complicated because you have things moving in two directions at once. But the coolest part is that only six of these entries are unique, right? Because this is the same as that, that's the same as that, and that is the same as that. So what we can do is we can just break it down into these six unique things. And then here's our second rank tensor, like I said before, of our you know, elasticity. But because we're using hooks a lot, these are springs, and this is a simple cubic lattice. So each atom is only attached to six of its neighbors. And so it's not going to have any weird stresses. This is where I'm probably wrong, but at this point, we are going to do this. So here are our diagonal um, um, elasticity values. And if we do what I did before and simplify that spring potential and grab the slope of that line, we get our spring constant. So if this were a spring, that's what the spring constant would be. And we just plug that in here to our matrix and we get, oh look, it's Hooke's Law. So if everything is wonderful and linear, it's probably not, but if it were, we have this Hooke's Law and we could use that to determine from the strain the stress or vice versa. And as you can see, it looks something like this. When you, so when the original position of the springs the black and then when you drag the atom over here you get this you get these red deformed springs. This one here squished, these are kind of stretched. And yeah, that's about it.